So this video is me sharing my screen um, and I'm going to walk you through how to use my tool in EdTech, which is YouTube. Um, so I'm recording on an app that I like to use called Nimbus. Um, I have a subscription to it. Um, I like it because on my Nimbus app, I can upload straight to my YouTube channel. Um, so for me, that works really well to have an outside um, recording program that I can screencast and I can then upload it straight to my YouTube. Or there's options on Nimbus that you can also download it to your Google Drive and things like that. So I find it really helpful um, to use a tool. It allows me to do this web camera or I can just record my desktop screen depending on what I want to share with my students. Um, so some things that I've found helpful about this EdTech tool, which is YouTube, um, one thing really is the accessibility features. Um, I didn't realize how many options there are in order to help our students um, access content better. Um, I know resources are often short. We have one um, ESL teacher for the whole district. Um, and even with that ESL support, um, you don't have someone who can translate your material for your students um, into their desired language. Um, we have a large population of Nepali students that have come in. Um, so having a way to translate material for some of those ESL students is awesome. Um, so on YouTube, and I'm gonna go to my channel particularly. And while this loads, um, on my channel, my videos, I always make sure when I record a video um, that I make um, closed captioning available. So when students pull open one of my videos, um, they are able to, and I'm gonna open one for us, and I'm gonna pause it just so that it doesn't speak over me. Okay, so here's one of my recordings. And as you can see down here, students can choose closed captioning. Um, and when they choose that feature, they can choose um, the language of their choice. They can have it translated, um, their subtitles, they can turn on and off, um, and they can choose language settings um, to access the video in. But that way their subtitles are in their native language, um, really helping some of those ELS, ASL students. Um, also for students with accommodations, um, who might learn better via reading the text or having um, that text appear. Um, closed captions in English also help those students as well. Um, and then you also have the auditory listeners um, where the video and the on-screen instructions help some of those see what you're doing. Um, they can also pause and chunk the instructions for themselves. Um, so something I find that I do is if I have a large set of instructions, I record those instructions in two to three minute clips um, and give them steps to accomplish. Um, I find this is great because a lot of the content our students are viewing these days on TikTok, on social media, come in two minute chunks. Um, so their attention span is already built to that two minute um, time frame before they move on to something else that they're watching. Um, so that's why I record my instructions in pieces. That way they don't have an entire 15 minute lesson to get through. They have like two minute chunks, step one, and then they perform that step. And then they go to step two in a different video. Um, I found this helps, especially with some of my IEP students it automatically breaks those instructions down for them so that they're not overwhelmed by large sets of instruction. Um, I also um, have used this tool um, to show things that I'm doing on my screen that maybe not everyone can see, or if they do need to take their time on something, they can play and they can pause. Um, this I find helps some people because they can rewind if they're not quite sure on a step instead of me having to constantly like redirect and reteach um, and maybe embarrass a student who's not quite getting the instruction they have the ability on their own to re-listen to those instructions and then if they've listened to them a couple of times and then they're still unsure then they can ask for further help 
Um, I find it gives some power back to the student. They're responsible for their learning um, and they're able to self-direct um, and move through the lesson at their own pace, which also helps some of my higher end students or my gifted students. They're not always playing catch up or waiting um, for the others to get to where they are. They can move to instruction two and instruction three, and they can work through at their own pace. And then I actually have time to enrich those students with extra material because they've now moved through at their own pace. Whereas when I don't self-direct and I give a whole group instruction at the same rate, I find I don't make it through um, necessarily with everyone um, and I don't have that time for enrichment. Um, so I found YouTube and instructions that are recorded in steps help me get to everyone's level um, much better in my classroom. Um, one of the other accessibility options um, that I just wanted to cover too quickly um, is the transcript feature. Um, I found, this is a new feature um, that I found that you can create a transcript for your video. Um, and that's a great feature because if I come here, I believe it's right with these three dots, show transcript. If I show the transcript, which is all the verbal talking um, that goes on, I can then print this. I can like um, copy it, highlight, copy it, and I can give it to students who might need notes provided for the lesson. Um, so that's great as well. I can put it into Google Translate if I want. Um, and then that's in their language of choice if I need. Um, and it says auto-generated English, but I think you can also, if you don't already choose auto-generated, um, you can change the language within YouTube, but I can also throw this into Google Translate and provide a um, printed set of instructions, either for accommodation students or ESL students. Um, so one more uh, great way to use this tool. And then a final tip that I wanna use um, with, or leave you with, is the playlist feature. Um, I've often created a playlist, especially when I'm chunking instructions. I can set up a playlist of those, let's say I have five instructional videos at two minutes a piece. So we're talking 10 minutes of instructions, but I've broken it down into two minute steps. I can create a playlist, say it's a project on um, dichotomous keys. So I'll create a dichotomous key playlist. I'll have those five videos in order on the playlist and I'll give a link to the playlist to my students. This way they don't have to find the videos. It's not five separate links. They have one playlist and the videos will play concurrently um, as they finish, which is great because it's one place. They have that playlist. If they need to go back to it, um, it's a way that they can access that material um, and they don't have to search for it. It keeps everything nice and neat. Um, and that way, if you have students who are absent as well, uh, you can just say, here's the playlist that we watched today. You can make up the work. Um, I also use my YouTube channel for students who are absent. I have a um, set of agendas that we use and I'll pull those up. So my daily agenda slides, um, I link videos to these to help also um, create more continuity in my classroom for students. So let's say we look at a week worth of slides. I set up the weekly slide showing what we've done when things are due. So students have access to this online at all times. And then there's daily slides. Um, that tell exactly what we did. But again, as a middle school student, you might not understand what those things mean. Um, so I will link a YouTube video um, on the weekly calendar going over what was accomplished that week. That way students who are absent or who are out, especially in this world of COVID, uh, for extended periods of times or on vacations and learning virtually, they can access those videos through my Google Slide deck and see exactly what was done in class, and then they can keep up with the classwork. And that get, makes it easier for you as a teacher because then you don't have all this makeup work being turned in 
the students that are not present in class can stay up to date with your work. Okay? And those are just some of the ways that I use YouTube in my classroom and how this EdTech tool helps me. I hope it helps you the same way. Thank you.